Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, I'm getting ready to switch ratchet over to RCV CV axles. And in order to get those axles ordered, because ratchet's totally custom, I need to get them very, very accurate lengths of the axles that I need. And they've given me dimensions that they need me to give them. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to tear everything apart. I need to get my U-joint axle out of there, take the bypasses out, take the coil carriers out of there so that I can freely cycle the suspension from full compression to full droop and take accurate readings of the lengths of what I'll need my axles to be so that I can get them that information. Okay, now I've got everything taken apart. I've got the scissor jack under here so I can crank this up to full compression. I can crank it down to full droop and I can get the measurements that I need. And this is what RCV is looking for. They want to know the distance from the mounting surface of the CV flange on the transaxle. And if we go over here to the mounting surface of the hub flange here. They want to know the difference between those two. And what they specifically want to know is what the length is at full compression and what the length is at full droop. They don't want to, they don't care what it is neutral, but I want to know what it is neutral. So you saw me just put my angle gauge on there and I have this cranked so that it's at zero degrees. I also have a scissor jack on this side of the chassis. I've got one on the other side of the chassis and I have the chassis leveled. So the chassis itself is at zero degrees and now I've got my lower control arm at zero degrees. And what I was doing was just trying to throw a tape measure from surface to surface and I was able to get a reading but I wasn't sure how accurate it was. So what I've been doing, because I really wanna be accurate with this, is I've been taking a piece of welding wire here and cutting it to the length that I think it is. If you can see. And I'm putting this in there and then I file it down. I cut it a little bit long. So I cut it a little bit long and then I come over here with the file and I just, I mean this is just 1 16th welding rod. So this is, I'm sorry, this is eighth inch. So this is real easy to just, you know, file it and shorten it down. And I'll file this down until I get it the length that I need. And so my neutral is 
28 and 11 sixteenths at zero degrees. That's the distance. And then you can see here, neutral on the driver's side was 28 and 9 sixteenths. So I do actually have an eighth of an inch difference between the passenger side and the driver's side. I don't think that's gonna be a problem, but I will let RCV know that there is a, a difference. So this is where I'm taking about down my notes. This is my neutral reading, and then I'm going 27 degrees for full compression. And then I'm also doing what I had set up with the U-joints was full droop was 22 degrees, but the uh, 930 CVs that I'm going to be getting can go to 28 degrees. So I figured I'd give them a measurement at 28 degrees as well, just so that I know um, the full like capabilities of the length that the axle needs to be. And you can see I've already done this on the driver's side. I've got my neutral, I've got my full droop at 22 degrees, and then I have a full droop at 28 degrees. I don't have a full compression because the full compression was the same as the full droop. So I didn't need to cut a rod for that. So I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. I'm gonna get a, a full droop and a full compression, and I'll put that in my notes. All right, now I just got my length from surface to surface for full compression. Now I'm going to lower the now I'm going to lower the suspension down to 22 degrees. That was my full droop when I had the U joints. I'm going to get a measurement from there, and then I'll take it all the way down to 28 degrees, and I'll get one more measurement there. All right, so I got all the dimensions I needed. Uh, probably I did that a little bit more neurotically than it needed to be done, but that's just how I do stuff. I do have a slight deviation in axle lengths from driver's side to passenger side. The passenger side is eighth of an inch longer. I don't think that's really a big deal, but regardless, I've got that information should they need it. It looks like as the suspension goes through its range of motion, I have about 3 sixteenths, maybe quarter inch of difference in length on the axle. However, the way that they're having me take these dimensions from the mounting surfaces, that's not the pivot points of the CVs or of my U-joints and they're gonna take that into account. They know the length of their CVs and things like that, so I'm assuming they've got a calculator that's gonna take that stuff into account. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. Anyways, um, wh what I have is, I now have, this is a, a stub axle that is made for a Toyota Tacoma or a Toyota 4Runner, apparently they use the same hubs. And if you remember, the hubs in the back of Ratchet are from a Toyota 4Runner. So this is a, a custom, not custom, this is a specially made, I mean, RCV makes these, they stock these. I mean, it was out of stock when I ordered it. That's why this took 16 weeks, but this is specifically made for a Toyota 4Runner or a Tacoma. And like I said, this is all chrome molly. This is a big non-plunging CV joint. This will go in the hub side and I already tested it. Everything fits perfectly. I've ordered the 930 CV. 
that's going to go on the transaxle side. And then what I'm doing right now is getting them a distance for the axles so that I can order the axles as well. So it's going to be a little while before I actually have this up and running because I have to get all of those parts. But I wanted to I wanted to order the axles as soon as I could so that once the 930s show up, I'll just be waiting on an axle to put this together. So I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that. Another thing I'm excited about is this CV joint is bigger and beefier than I expected it to be. So I'm actually thinking, you know, when I was running the U-joints, it was originally because I thought the U-joints were going to be a lot stronger than the CV joints. But after looking at this beast, I mean, this thing is a beast. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be really strong. I mean, this is a unit. This thing is heavy. It's chromoly. This thing, I'm pretty stoked to get this on there. Oh, here's actually, let me show you guys the difference. This is, there you go. This is the stub shaft that I had in there for the 760X U-joint. That's what's in here now. And you can see that. And this, this part right here is chromoly. So this is pretty strong. But the rest of this is not chromoly. So there's that. And then if I put it up against this, you can see that there is quite a difference. This CV joint is pretty, pretty solid. And like I said, this entire thing is chromoly. So I'm, uh, look at that, that's huge. And it's heavy. So anyways, I'm pretty excited about that. Anyways. That's it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys some of the process, how I'm measuring all that stuff like a psychopath. This CV joint is nine plunging, which means it'll be able to go to 40 degrees. The 930 CVs that I'm ordering for the transaxle side are not non plunging. So those are not supposed to go beyond 28 degrees, which is okay with my current setup. But once I get all those, and I can actually measure things and see if my axle length is changing at all. If I ever get, well, first of all, if it doesn't change at all, I could upgrade to non-plunging CVs and then go to technically 40. I wouldn't go to 40. I'd probably go to like 32, 34, maybe something like that, which would give me a couple more inches of travel, which would be pretty cool. Um, if, if it turns out that the axle length changes a little bit, then uh, if I wanted to, I can modify my spindles or I would have to remake spindles on the outboard end of Ratchet to get my pivot points in line with the new pivot points of the CVs. But I could go into, I could go into detail on that on another video. It's just something that I might do because to be honest with you, I love working with suspension and I'm addicted to try and get as much travel as safely possible out of a system. But uh, I, I guarantee you, for starters, I'm just going to get these these CVs in here and go on so that I can take ratchet, ratchet out and actually start beating the crap out of them with some axles that I don't have to worry about. So that's my mission right now. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.